Hello everybody and welcome back to the internet's best reactions. Today we are discussing the Hungarian Grand Prix. We've done Austria twice, the Red Bull Ring, sign sealed, delivered, I'm yours. And now it's the Hungarian Grand Prix and I was convinced it was going to be a banger. I thought, yes, changeable conditions, it's a wet track, intermediates, drying conditions. But, you know, the first few laps were a banger, but the rest of it, ugh. But your reactions were amazing, let's dive into them. I'm wearing a shirt again, don't know why. Glow up. Now the racing had almost begun before we were even on the grid. Max Verstappen just absolutely going for it, trying to find the grip. At Harvey underscore zero four, Max driving to the grid. We thought it was over. I was convinced, not a chance they were going to be able to fix that by lights out, which I think was 25 minutes later on. And obviously you have to have the mechanics off the grid as well before that. And I think it was 20 seconds they had to spare uh, before they had to be off the grid. So unbelievable from the Red Bull mechanics and Verstappen, well, he made up for it. Although I wonder what the debrief will be like. You know, Max, what were you doing? But also great drive. He kind of made up for it. Memeula1 from Instagram. Red Bull mechanics fixing Max car be like, I am speed. Love that film, love the meme, good work. Now the big brain strats, you have to say, Haas F1 team. My goodness me, Gunter Steiner and the team have looked like rock stars so far in this Hungarian Grand Prix weekend because they nailed it. At FLX STFFLR, Haas at the moment. My goodness. I, I, we, I was kind of thinking that's very risky. It still looked quite wet and they were slow for the first couple of laps, but they still made it work. You had them up in P3 and 4 and Magnussen, well done mate, points. You did a great job. Grosjean, a little bit iffy. As everyone came into the pits, one man really did struggle, Sebastian Vettel. At Karan Monga, Seb waiting to be let out of the pits. I think Martin Brundle came over the, the commentary and said, you know, Ferrari were being far too cautious. And it, it kind of reminded me of playing the F1 games where you just sat there and the team's just not letting you go, even though there is clear space to go into. And then there's cars going past and you're like, come on, give me the green light. But uh, Vettel did a good job as well, it has to be said. Ferrari, being a Ferrari fan, which I am not one of, obviously, you know, just, uh, just passionate, but you know, it, it, it was difficult for them. But I think Vettel did a pretty decent job overall. I'm handing out the compliments left, right and centre. I need to start being horrible to people, which actually, surprisingly, is this next week. At James Lewis 21, Latifi exiting the pits. Now, I'm not going to be horrible about Latifi because really it's the team letting him out. But that was one of the most dangerous releases I've ever seen. Signs is there. And they just go, Latifi, off you go, mate. You're, you're, you're safe. You're safe. Signs nearly clattered into the wall, gave Latifi a puncture, uh, which leads me on to the next tweet, which is at Aussie F1 fan watching Latifi limping to the pits. Not only that, but the spin that James Lewis mentioned, it was just such a sad, because he was up to P10 in lap one. I was going, go on, Nicholas, you legend, because he was behind Russell on the grid. Somehow Russell drops to 16th. Latifi's in the points. It was all going so well. And then he was like two laps down. Now, a man I feel that has taken over the reins from Carlos Sainz in terms of not getting any TV coverage is one Mr. Kimi Raikkonen at Formula Y4DE. Oop, Kimi, I guess they are taking his time now. Now, I think that was in re reference to his slow pit stop later on in the race. But firstly, this advert. Please stop it. I don't understand what's going on. Why is he saying he's a Formula One driver, but he takes his time and then he's in a car and he takes his time? I don't know. If you don't watch Sky Sports, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, but there's an advert with Kimi Raikkonen in, in about the Alfa Romeo, whatever it is. It just doesn't make any sense. He was making moves. He was at like seven places at the start of the race. Didn't see any of it. Now, there's a lot of messages on social media throughout the race about Valtteri Bottas and the jump start that he allegedly did. At SMD Iva Karuni, why hasn't Bottas got a penalty for jumping the start yet? It looked like it was pretty much a stonewall penalty. However, just before recording, I saw an analysis of the Bottas start where there's the two tenths window in which uh, people are allowed to, people, drivers are allowed to, to react within. He was still in his pit box when the lights went out. I think genuinely one more frame further and he was out of the pit box. Very lucky indeed, Mr. Bottas. Got to P3, which is all right, I guess. Should have really beaten Verstappen. Here comes the negativity. Do you like it? This was quite a funny thing that Sky F1 pointed out on at Fusion Gamer J1. Hamilton, after hearing Verstappen, is still in the race after crashing out on the way to the grid. Hamilton was like, oh, I thought, I thought Verstappen was out. I didn't realise he was still racing. It, that's just the kind of aura that Verstappen has. It's like, oh, you know, I can finally relax. Verstappen is not going to dive bomb me. 
Oh, no, he's behind me. Although there wasn't much to really worry about because Hamilton and Mercedes were far too quick. I was sat there the whole race just going, Matt, don't tweet that you are bored of this race because you said before that you would not, before the season started, you would not complain because we've missed Formula One so much and it's been seven months and we just like cars on track, don't we? Yeah, guys? We, we're fine with the fact that Mercedes are dominating more than they probably ever have. Cool. <laughs> just wanted to check. Now, the biggest tease that we had throughout the race as F1 fans, we're sat there, we hear the team radio, light rain in five minutes, medium rain in five minutes. What the hell is medium rain? I can only liken that to medium Nando sauce, and that's quite spicy, so I was imagining quite a lot of rain. Anyway, at F1 Adam 8. Okay, Lewis, we're seeing some rain on the radar, but it will only be light. The worst thing to hear as an F1 fan, and probably for anybody else other than Mercedes, we didn't really get it. There was a few spots of rain that really teased us, but I think there's a few more tweets coming up as well. Just, we were all just so unhappy that we didn't get torrential rain, weren't we? And, and why are they telling us that there's rain down at a water park? I don't care. As long as it's not raining on the track, that's all that matters. Now, I mentioned about the Williams pit stop later on in the race. Uh, they, they gave the penalty to Latifi, five seconds for an unsafe release, at Kankan Barua 98. Adding time penalty to Latifi, who's already down on P20 and a lap down. It, it did feel like that, didn't it? It really did. The poor guy. I mean, he absolutely deserved the penalty, but I did have to feel for him after such a good start. At Maria from the block, seeing Kimi and Latifi getting time penalties and waiting for Bottas to finally get his. Apparently didn't deserve it. They have sensors uh, on the grid boxes and just to see how far they jump the start if they do and it's within the parameters. So Bottas is okay. We're going to move on. Although Bottas is the luckiest man alive. How many times does he need to have like 0 0.0002 that he's within this uh, wonderful realm of staying out of a penalty? Now there was loads of midfield battles with the likes of Norris. You had Leclerc, you had Vettel and that's exactly what Todd Samways comes in watching the two Ferraris race each other. It was, I don't know how there wasn't a crash, whether between these two or just all the moves that Albon was making. And there were just so many really tight moments into turn one and turn two. I'm very surprised there wasn't a safety car and I was praying for a safety car. So I kind of wanted one of them to have a little ding dong, but alas, it didn't happen. Who has won tweet of the week? This one deserves tweet of the week. It's, it's, it, it genuinely made me lol. At J underscore Jassy 8, George Russell confronting Horner for not giving Alex Albon more power. <laughs> that was after the, the Albon team radio where he was complaining to Red Bull about, why aren't you giving me more power? It sounded very odd. We didn't really know who he was speaking to or if he was just kind of chatting to the car. Either way, Alex Albon was struggling a lot and George Russell, <laughs> yeah, there was a little, quite a bit of touchy stuff coming into this weekend about George Russell kind of backing up Alex Albon and then Verstappen coming out and going, Russell has no idea what he's talking about, just he should focus on his own team or something. I was like, woo! This was very close to Tweet of the Week, but as always, not Tweet of the Week. I don't think we'll have a segment where it's almost Tweet of the Week, because it doesn't really make much sense, but either way. At Daniel J Thorpe Zero, pitting both of your drivers before the race start, and one of them being in a podium place by lap 10, and obviously later on as well in, uh, in the points, Gunter Einsteiner. So we've mentioned the two Ferraris fighting. There was also Lando and Charles at Amy P1044, seeing Charles and Lando fighting on track. It was a proud moment for me seeing two Twitch streamers fighting for 14th place. It genuinely, it was, it was the close. There genuinely was about that much, I reckon. I mean, I wasn't on track to measure it, but Charles Leclerc losing his back end out of turn two, Lando being squeezed off the road. That should have ended in a crash, but it didn't. And it was high quality racing from the pair of them. I look forward to seeing them stream in the week off. Maybe. I don't know, will they? Actually, I think Lando will at least, surely. At Jimmy Broadbent. He wanted me to discuss this, and who am I to ignore Mr. Jimmy Broadbent? It's, of course, the tyre performance graphics. We love them. We've mentioned them before in this series. We've mentioned them in the podcast. And here we are once again with AWS Insights giving us absolutely no insight. This picture of Hamilton, 40% on the left, 70% on the right and 50% on the right side of the car. Verstappen has 10% on his left. I know that they're trying to give us some sort of information. Maybe the 
the sort of newer F1 fans, but that means nothing to a newer F1 fan. If I didn't play the F1 game, I'd be going, what are they even trying to tell me here? That Hamilton's front right is basically new after 30 laps on the mediums. Are you... <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting angry, you can tell. Like this, this is pointless. Why are they giving Hamilton and Mercedes 8.7 out of 10? What is a 10? Uh, who, who goes, no, that's not a 10? I mean, it's the fastest car around the entire track, but that's not a 10. It doesn't make any sense. Like, dissect actual information and then give us insights. Don't go, yeah, I looked out the window, Verstappen's front right looks like a 30% to me, yeah. Now, continuing on the ranting theme at by underscore D underscore hand, yeah, sure, Crofty. Raikkonen in 17th is battling Max in second for position. I was sat there and I was like, how on earth, Crofty, have you thought that Raikkonen in quite possibly the slowest car on the grid uh, in race pace is fighting Verstappen or was in 20 seconds in order for this to happen? Now, I'm not coming at this from a, you know, I am such a commentator genius because I made mistakes as well last weekend. I called Dan Tictum's front right tyre a 50p pence in the F2 race. So I'm not saying I'm perfect, but Crofty been making a few mistakes and I think he just needs to maybe just remember who the McLaren drivers are and which one's which. Alex Jakes for F1 commentator at some point. I know you agree. Oh, we get on to another graphic. This is just rant, rant, rant at the moment, but I'm not gonna go too hard. Uh, or, or am I? <laughs> At Dan 64107195, Bottas striking distance, 22 laps. One lap later, Bottas striking distance, six laps. Now I know what they're trying to do with this, that again, trying to simplify it for the audience, but the gap is fine. Just leave it at the gap and how much he has closed over the previous few laps, because this is based on whatever the previous lap was. Oh, Bottas gained a second. Oh, he'll be there in six laps. Oh, Bottas gained one tenth. Oh, he's gonna be there in 22 laps. It's more confusing than anything. So just calm it down with the insights because they're really not. Ah, love this tweet. Don't know why I included it. Cause it, cause it hurts or does it? It doesn't hurt, passionate. At CCF1 channel, Hamilton just laps Leclerc. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Do not care in the slightest. At Ferrari are terrible. At Benesque 94, I'm a fan of Lewis, but this Mercedes dominance is getting out of hand. Yeah, I know I said earlier about the fact I wasn't really going to complain. I'm not going, I'm still not going to because I still love the fact Formula One is back, but the fact that the sporting regulations are not changing till 2022 means that probably next year is going to be all mu very much the same with Mercedes at the front. At least we had Ferrari last year giving them with their illegal power modes. Just give it back to them. No one's really gonna care apart from every other team in the sport, but we won't care. Just give them back. It's fine. Just keep that document sealed. It's all the matters. No one needs to know. Social media team championship time now. Here we are once again. And Hungarian Grand Prix edition. Who is gonna score more points? Let's find out. In third position, we have Williams Racing. Back-to-back -back point scoring for them. Hearing that the rain shower might pass south of the circuit. They were feeling pretty aggrieved just like we were hearing that you know down at the water park it's torrential rain they didn't say that but it was raining just kind of relating to the fans I like it Williams well done one point two points it is the reigning champions once again I don't think they I, I can't remember the last time they didn't score points in the social media team championship they just nail it it's BW Racing Point Formula One team almost didn't say that probably but I did 12 laps remaining 36 second gap to Valtteri Bottas only three seconds per lap to find for a podium then good it was good amounts of positivity and optimism and that scores you two points racing point well done now the winners of the social media team championship for hungary are i feel bad for not giving them points last week i got a lot of stick for it because i missed it because i was kind of busy so i apologize but here we are three points for mercedes amg f1 the real reign is the friends that you make along the way do I need to go deeper into that? No, I'm just gonna let that sit. I'm gonna let that sizzle on your brains right now. I need a race run down sheet, race run down sheet. And now it's time for Race Rundown with your host, Matthew Gallagher. Here we go then, race rundown time. Let's get it straight out of the way. It's 19 finishes, so it might take a while. The Hungarian Grand Prix finishers were Hamilton Vettel, Bottas, Stroll, Albon, Vessel. Okay. Hamilton, Vettel, Bottas, Stroll, Albon, Vettel, Perez, Ricardo, Magnussen, Sainz, Leclerc, Giviat, Norris, Ocon, Grosjean, oh, there's so many finishes! 
Hamilton Verstappen, Bottas, Stroll, Albon, Vettel, Perez, Ricardo, Magnussen, Sainz, Leclerc, Kvyat, Norris, Ocon, Grosjean, Raikkonen, Gruber, Nazi, Russell, Lefsifi. It will do. A non-finished word, Gasly. Gasly. That's as fast as I can do it, Gasly. Gasly. Right, that is it. We are done here for the internet's best reactions to the Hungarian Grand Prix. Round three is ticked off. We're done. We now have a week's break. What earth are we going to fill the time with? I don't know. I'm just going to lay here and wait, I suppose. If you want to get involved next time, use the hashtag WTF1 on social media, and we will use the very best ones to be featured next time. The British Grand Prix, back to back. Can't wait. Yes, it's going to be a Mercedes dominance again, isn't it? Oh, God. I'm ready for it. Not complaining. Formula One's back. See you then. Bye.